now that we are familiarized with open layers for visualization of our data and geo server for projecting our data into different services such as WMS or WFS or even style our data. Now is the time where we look into how to store our data. It, it makes complete sense to say that data is the heart of GIS because without data we are we don't have anything right. So it makes sense to spend some time understanding what are different ways to save our data so that our data will be secured but at the same time accessible whenever we need. So in this video we will try to understand what exactly is database and how to use this. We will try to have a look at what is database, what is DBMS, what is SQL and then what is Postgres which is a type of database, what are the features of Postgres and what are the steps to install Postgres. So let's start with what is database. A database is an organized collection of structured information or data typically stored in electronically uh, in a computer system. So this is a website uh, oracle.com which states this is the definition of database but in layman's term you can think about database as a system where we will store all the data. So until this point we were using JSON and shape files and things like that. Ultimately if you look at JSON or even look at shape file in QGIS or ArcMap you will see that it is nothing but a collection of different rows representing each feature, right? We can save all that data in a database so that we can access it from there. There are different types of database such as centralized database where all information is stored in one centralized database, commercial database which caters specific need of the commercial uh, application such as the database which is used by e-commerce will be different than the database used by the logistics company, right? Then we have operational database. So database where information about operations such as customer relationships or products or things like that are saved. Then cloud database which is becoming very famous nowadays because everyone now wants to move their things in a secured yet really easily accessible way and cloud database fulfills both these demands. On top of that we can anytime we want we can increase the capabilities and uh, you know hardware uh, capacities of the cloud database and we only have to pay for the time that we are using those hardwares right. So it becomes really cost effective and at the same time really powerful. Then we have NoSQL database. Basically, uh, there is a difference between NoSQL database and a relational database which will uh, make you clear, clear your concept about both of these databases. So we are actually dealing with relational database right now. So what happens is each type of data, for example, let's say customers. So if you think about customers uh, and let's say if you are working on any e-commerce website, what will happen is your customers will have specific fields of information. So for example, your customer will have a name, will have an email ID, will have an address and things like that. So I can create a table in my database and I can predefine the uh, columns where I can expect the value to come. So there will be a column of name where I can store all the names. There will be a column of email where I can store all the emails and things like that. So that is how relational database works. Basically in relational database there are different tables and then we can connect each uh, these tables with each other using primary keys, foreign keys and things like that. While in NoSQL database there is no uh, there is no necessity there is no necessary things to create a specific table having specific columns uh, so for example products so if you consider product as a book book will have things such as number of pages 
and then if it is a hard cover or it is a soft copy or it is a kindle version or things like that and it will have uh, author information and things like that but at the same time if you consider another product let's say a computer things that will have is the what what kind of uh, technology or a motherboard it is using what is the ram size what is the hdd hard disk size sdd size and things like that ssd size and things like that so if you think about it both are products laptop is also a product and book is also a product but the values and key in each of these products are different and that is why it makes sense to save them in a NoSQL database where there will be just a database table name as product and inside that each feature will have different columns. So this is basically the difference between NoSQL database and relational database. Uh, we will be dealing with relational database in this uh, lecture series. So what is DBMS? So DBMS is database management system that means managing complete data in a database and filter the data in order to get the meaningful results. So there are different types of database management systems such as hierarchical, hierarchical database. So basically each data feature will have child features and then they will again have the child features and things like that. We will be dealing with relational database uh, in this in this uh, uh, lecture series where we will be doing operations such as create, retrieve, update, delete and things like that. Then there is a network DBMS and object oriented DBMS. So you can explore more about them on the internet. Now what is SQL? So SQL is a querying language, structured querying language which helps us to interact with the database, specifically relational database. So it helps us to write queries so that we can uh, program or command our database to fetch us specific type of data. So if let's say if I have a table name as cars, when I write select star from cars, that means select all the things that are available in the cars table and it will fetch me everything. So this select star from cars is a query that I have written in SQL. Similarly, I can add conditions to it such as select star from cities where population is greater than 5 million. So basically what I, I have did is I have considered that e, uh, in the table of cities there will be a column name as population having value of population of each city and whatever city has population value greater than 5 million will be returned back. So basically this is the use of uh, having a relational database because here each column will have a specific type. So the specific type of uh, what I can say a specific type of data can be your uh, string that means your name, email, addresses, things like that then integer so it can be any number floating as well as normal integer there can be a big integers so uh, numbers varying for, for multi billion multi million these are all under big integers then there are dates so if you specify a column as date and if you enter all the dates in that then you will be able to fetch information for the previous week so if you have your uh, database of customers and if you are interested in fetching all the customers who signed up in last week you will be able to fetch information because you have a column na named as date and also the type of that column is a date time all right so similar to that we also have geometry and this is not actually uh, predefined in a database you will have to use extensions so we will have a more uh, look at that in, in, in next slide. So Postgres is a type of SQL database. It is a relational database and they claim that it is the world's most advanced open source relational database. Every major company who is dealing with open source data or with open source technologies prefer Postgres because it has proven to be really fast and really secured 
when it comes to the database management and data handling. It works on a relational DBMS as I said that means you can create different tables in Postgres and then you can connect these tables with each other. So what can be an example of that? As we were discussing about same product so what I can do is I can also create one more table of let's say vendors. So each vendor will sell different products right. Now in my products table I will have information about all the products. So let's say if I, I am set to use relational database for my product what I can do is I can create different tables for different types of products. So let's say if I have a table name as books okay so all books which uh, are sold by vendors will be added in this database. So let's say we have uh, five different books and each book is sold by different vendors. So if you go to Amazon you will see that on each uh, product page you will also have author's name or vendor's name to be specific. Okay. So and when you click on that vendor's name information about that vendor can be seen to you. So what happens is basically in your uh, books table you will only give foreign key ID of the vendor. So there will be another table for vendor and where the vendor information such as their name, their email address, uh, their address, their uh, the payment that, that they accept and things like that will be written and each vendor will have a unique ID. So what we will do is we will take that unique ID and we will only save that unique ID into our books table. So what will happen is each row in your books table will have that specific ID and based on that ID we will be able to fetch all the information about that specific vendor. So that is how foreign keys are used. So we are able to do all these kinds of things really easily in Postgres and that is why we use Postgres. Postgres has been developed for more than 30 years and hence it has proven to be one of my favorite as well. Postgres comes with a extension known as PostGIS. So <coughs> We will look into it now. So what are the features of Postgres? So as I said, it supports different types of data types. So such as varchar, that means characters, integers, big integers, and also geometry such as point, polygon, line, circle, etc. Uh, all these capabilities comes when we install an extension known as PostGIS. So PostGIS enables us to do GIS related queries in Postgres. So we will have a look at uh, those queries in upcoming lecture where we actually go through the Postgres. But for now you can consider that this is a really cool platform to, do, to perform special queries. Data integrity. Data is secured properly and can be used for querying. So your data is really secured in Postgres and there are very 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 less chances that your data will be vanished and with amazing technologies uh, uh, emerging every day such as Amazon Aurora you are able to uh, create serverless Postgres databases where you will never lose your data even if there is a hardware failure. So that is really I think uh, a really cool thing to have. Uh, performance options there are many options available to boost up your querying speed such as indexing so when you do indexing all your data uh, is stored in a fashion so that it can be uh, queried and fetched really fast. So these are some of the features of Postgres which makes it uh, favorite to uh, very uh, to the most open source enthusiast and we will be using Postgres only. Now let's have a look at how to install or what are the steps to install Postgres. So I would suggest you to do this parallelly as I do. You can log in, uh, you can visit this website or simply search on Google about Postgres download. Now I will be installing Postgres on Mac. Since I already have installed it, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to do this again but it is really simple and you can easily install it just like you install any other software. But the process of installing it on Mac 
installing it on Windows as well as Linux is same. So if I quickly go to Postgres database page, download page which I shared with you, you can see that you can download it for different versions and I would suggest you to use 10.13 because it's stable and it supports everything. So what you can do is you, you just have to simply click on download and your download will begin. So thank you for downloading and once it is downloaded it is really easy you just have to double click in order to install. Make sure that uh, when, when you are installing it will ask you to enter a password. So make sure that you enter the password which you will remember. Once you have installed it successfully you have to go into the application folder where you have installed your Postgres and you will see that PG admin 4 will be there. So when I double click on this, this is basically user interface or what do you can say GUI for the Postgres and you have to then double click on this application stack builder and you have to then install PostGIS extension. So how to do that? When you click on stack builder, you will see this special extension. So just, un uh, just uh, go here, click on this post GIS 2.4 for Postgres. And since I have already installed it, I don't need to reinstall it. But as you can see, you can click on next and then it will be installed for your Postgres. Once it is installed, all you have to do is restart your Postgres and enter the password and you will be inside your Postgres. I have actually connected to different Postgres servers uh, for my clients. So I'm not going to show you that, but you will see this Postgres SQL 10, which is your local database. And inside this, you will see database, login and table space. So inside login, you can create different users for uh, you to log in with different privileges. We are not going into that. We are interested in database. So in next video, we will start with creating database and then we'll see how exactly Postgres works. Remember that there are various ways to access the tables and Postgres such as by using GUI or by using command line. You can explore in depth about command lines. If you are a Linux fan, then I am pretty sure you love command line. So you can do the same things which we do with GUI with command lines as well and which I would highly recommend you guys to check it out. But for this course, we will be using PG admin as our GUI for interacting with our Postgres. So I hope the concept of database and Postgres is clear to you. In upcoming video, we will get started with working with Postgres. Thank you.